Hello and welcome to Cutting to the Boys, the post to the apocalypse. We're doing this on Skype because I am in self-isolation due to a family member having the dreaded corona. So uh, we couldn't meet up this week. I don't know what we're going to do in the future. There's no shield in this time, Mike, so you may, you know, you may have to indulge us and we'll come round. Anyway, guess. I'm Ben. We'll <laughs> I'm Ben. I'm joined by Mike and Claire. Hello. Hello. Hi. And today's topic is... We're going to talk about the 1990 film Total Recall. Three. Not that, indeed, good choice as well. I really enjoy watching this again. Classic. Yeah. Classic, yeah. It is fantastic. And I, I've never bothered with the remake because I never saw the need to. It's shite. Oh, there you go then. That's all you need to know. <laughs> it's got Colin Farrell in it, so I assumed it was crap. And it's not even set on Mars. Oh, fucking hell. So no one says, get to Mars, <laughs> get your ass to Mars. Ugh, no, it's awful. Point. All right, then, Mike, do you want to uh, give us some uh, new and returning listeners, please? Because you've got the laptop. Yeah. Dublin, Ireland, Niles, Michigan, Palmer's Green, UK, Berlin, Germany, Brussels, Belgium, Copenhagen, Denmark. I think you mean Copenhagen. <laughs> <laughs> Shizuoka, Japan. Right. Buffalo, New York, Cairo, Egypt, Tallinn, Estonia, Windsor, Canada, Glasgow, UK, top five, Ashburn, Virginia, Sydney, Australia, Sylvester, Georgia, Guadalajara, Spain, and Shady Nasty, New York. Wow. Shady Nasty back at number one. I know, yeah, I put some lipstick on for him this evening. Uh, <laughs> We're not even on the cameras. <laughs> It could be multiple people, Claire. You might be putting it up to for loads of people. Well, that's it. Well, you know, even more so. Great. <laughs> <laughs> that's what some people call a result. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> All right, then. Let's do some weird news and then we'll crack on and talk about Total Recall. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. Pro-Trump televangelist predicts the president will win the election and then the world will end. Okay, who's this? This is um, a a returning dickhead, Pat Robinson. Oh, Pat Robinson. He's been quiet for a while. Thought he was dead. (laughs) Sadly not. I thought I'd put this in because obviously we're recording this on Tuesday and it is your election in the US, American listeners. So, uh, you know... You're screwed if you do and screwed if you don't. Both your candidates are dog shite. <sighs> That's about the sum of it, isn't it? <laughs> What's your predictions then for tomorrow? I can't actually call it. I wouldn't ben? like to say. I, I think Biden's going to win in the long term, but I think Trump's going to be ahead at one point in the night and he's going to stop the election complaining about dodgy ballots. And he's going to go to the courts and get it. Get the election stopped, I think. Are you staying up to watch it, Mike, or listen to it? Probably not, because we won't really know anything until, like, the early hours of the morning. So I'll, I'll probably stay up and watch a little bit of it. But You'll still be awake. Yeah, more than likely. <laughs> <laughs> I've got to get up at half past five to take the dog out to, so no one is around. I think I've got, to, I've got to agree with this guy. I think Trump's going to win and the world's going to end. <laughs> no. <laughs> Wow. (laughs) All right, then I'll I'll read the uh, article. So Pat Robinson, who founded the Christian Broadcasting Network, told viewers of his show, which is called The 700 Club, which is presumably how old Pat Robinson is. Uh. First of all, I want to say without question, Trump is going to win the election. Um, Currently, at the time of this article, he was down nine points in the polls. Yeah, we know what the polls are like, don't we? Well, that's true. They were saying Um, this last time. Yep. 
Robertson said, and this is a quote, what I think, very frankly, is the only thing that will fulfill the word of Jesus is some kind of asteroid strike on the globe. It's sudden destruction. It's not going to be nuclear war. We're not going to be allowed to blow this earth up. What does it mean we're not going to be allowed? That's what I thought, Mike. What do you mean we're not going to be allowed? He's not going to allow us. Not that we want to, you know. I I presume God or Jesus. Uh, Or aliens. Or aliens or the alien formerly known as Jesus. (laughs) He also predicted there'll be five years will pass between the election and the destruction of the earth by an asteroid. In the meantime, he argued there'll be civil disobedience, riots and two assassination attempts on Trump. Um, and then to top things off, he also prophesies there will be a war on Israel, which will only end when God intervenes. Hmm. Um, anyone who's starting to freak out slightly, because some people do believe in prophecy, it should be pointed out that old Patty Boy has uh, made a few prophecies before, that, uh, including the world would end in 1982 and also in 2007. Let's say that he's not the Nostradamus of the church. Certainly isn't. We're still here. Well, that's it. He's not even the mystic Meg of the church. <laughs> no, it's just septic smeg. Mm. <laughs> I'm pretty. Isn't making prophecy, prophecy uh, like witchcraft or something? I don't know. Don't know about that. You know. Oh well, just just wondering. Yeah. So okay. So Trump's going to win. We're going to have five years of him, and then an asteroid's going to hit us. Well, apparently there is going to be an asteroid close to us soon, but you know, close in astronomical terms is not that close. So I don't know. No, but, I mean, like, it's like, oh, my God, it's like 40,000 miles away. And you're like, yeah, that's still pretty far away. Yeah. I think that yeah. when they say close, it means we'll be able to see it from Earth. Yeah. It? You know, when, when it starts shaving the ozone layer as it screams past us, then I'll start to panic a little bit more. Just oh, fuck it. Get off as it, as it flies by. Yeah, it just takes a bit off. <laughs> This takes out, like, part of the globe as it goes past. I don't know. Could that happen, conceivably, if it was big enough? I guess. That would be interesting. Should we do the next one? Yep. Okay. Man dating ghost hosts kinky sex parties and plays naked twister with ghouls. (laughs) (laughs) More ghost sex. There seems to be a run of ghost sex in the press recently. There does. Yeah, they should meet up and have a gangbang. <laughs> That's what he's doing. <laughs> the other girl from last week, she... Uh... Yeah. <laughs> the Amethyst Realm girl. Yeah. 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 Well, Gary Denoyer, who previously revealed he was dating a ghost, claims he hasn't had the easiest ride in lockdown. The 36-year-old from New Jersey, US, says he's been in a relationship with a spirit named Lisa for the past two years. And despite having an amazing sex life, early this year, Gary feared his soulmate was cheating on him with another man. Oh, soulmate, and she's a ghost. (laughs) (laughs) Now putting his insecurities to one side, the Americans spoke exclusively to Daily Star Online about what they've been up to recently. I can't wait to find out. Quality journalism, innit? (laughs) He said, we have progressed to the point where we host other spirits, I guess like a sex party. Lisa and I were getting bored with our sex and I felt like it would keep her from going out a lot as I've been a hermit during COVID. Well, ghosts can catch it as well, Well, apparently. That other woman. (laughs) (laughs) He continued, I came to my senses and said, fuck it, you've got to talk to Lisa about this. She responded by laughing at me saying how paranoid I was being and that she was just hanging out with her friends and not other humans. To prove it, she started bringing them over, which led us to where we are now. How does that conversation go? It's like, oh, here's my friends. It's like, "Hmm, maybe we should have a ghost orgy. (laughs) Apparently, he revealed the sex part is a chill, but crazy. How can you be chill, but crazy? You tell me. Everybody has a little wine to loosen up. We start by playing Spin the Pumpkin. I've never heard that one. Shouldn't they have spirits? (laughs) (laughs) Ha ha! Terrible. Sorry. (laughs) I know it's corny, but it's our version of spin the bottle. Whoever the pumpkin stops spinning is, that is the person you make out with. 
After that, we dance and play Naked Twister, fun stuff like that. And the sex happens when it feels natural and it's anything goes. <laughs> so so <laughs> the face lands on you. The face lands on you when the pumpkin stops spinning. I guess so. Right, okay. Yeah, it's not going to spin that much, is it? It's bloody... No. No, I've never <laughs> spun a pumpkin before. Uh I must admit, it sucks. I don't think, you know, I've never had a pumpkin in the house, to be honest. So, yeah. So this guy spins a pumpkin, and then he kisses the air. Yeah, basically, this guy's just pissed, naked, playing <laughs> Twister on his own, having a wank. <laughs> <laughs> he's got a wonderful imagination, though. Have you seen the picture of him on the sofa with his arms out, as if he's got, like, two women sat either side of him? He's living the dream. <laughs> he's he's uh, <laughs> superb. Ah, oh, this guy's a lunatic. Oh, yeah. Right, I'll move on to the next piece of news. Okay. okay. So we've got mum was mortified after daughter, age five, took Lube to school thinking it was hand sanitizer. Oh. <laughs> so this mum was mortified after finding out that. Yeah, in her in her daughter's coat pocket, when she was loading up the washing machine, she got lube in it instead of hand sanitizer. Oh dear, it's called heat wave. <laughs> she believed uh, that the youngster spotted an Ann Summers logo and presumed it was hers. <laughs> oh dear. Oh dear. So Louise from Livingstone said, "I was like, oh, oh my God, why have you got that?" She said. And she goes, it's for my hands, for the germs. <laughs> so, yeah. Oh, right. man. Yeah, someone told her, this is for mummy and it needs to go in her cupboard. <laughs> <laughs> oh, dear. Uh, yeah, and she used it with her friends on the playground and her mum was really embarrassed. It would have been a bit, like, sort of, not sticky, but, oh, imagine that. <laughs> <laughs> well, which, you know, it, it. I think it's it's great that the mum's got a, such an active sex life. She needs to buy lube. That's what you take away from this story, is it? Yes. I thought she was a dried up old trout. <laughs> 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 Maybe she's been, you know, experimenting with other holes. Who knows? Oh yeah, yeah. Sorry, yeah. <laughs> you know. Whatever floats your boat. <laughs> That's it, you know. At least, at least they've still got an active sex life, even with three kids. You know, <laughs> that she's still buying Ann Summers lube. Fair play. All right, should we go on to the uh, the film? Yeah. Okay. All right then. So, Total Recall, nineteen ninety. I was actually surprised this was nineteen ninety. You know, I actually thought this was late eighties. So it was a little bit later than I assumed. I thought it was 80s as well. I thought it was 89. I don't know why. Yeah, I thought something like that. Apparently one of the, if not the most expensive uh, Hollywood blockbuster to date at the time, costing $65 million. Yeah. So starring Arnie, of course, Arnold Schwarzenegger as Quaid or Sharon Stone as Laurie, Michael Ironside as Richter and uh, Rachel Ticotin with Melina, um, and of course directed by Paul Beerhoven, who went on to do Starship Troopers later. He did, he'd done Robocop before this, hadn't he? Yes. Do you know who was going to play the lead role instead of Arnie at one point? Oh, yes. cack, I, I did see this earlier. Go on, tell me. Patrick Swayze. That's it. <laughs> <laughs> no, that <would> be terrible. <laughs> <laughs> Imagine Patrick Swayze in this movie. Oh, round, <laughs> roundhouse. If it was someone like Lou Diamond Phillips, I'd understand. You, but... you and Lou Diamond <laughs> Phillips, Mike. <laughs> <laughs> he really, you've got a thing for Lou Diamond Phillips he's a good actor he's only been in one film <laughs> uh, he's been in lots of films lots of TV movies All right, well, <laughs> that's why you don't see him very often then. <laughs> All right, actually uh, this was based on a Philip K. Dick short story yep. called We Can Remember It For You Wholesale Right. Weird. 
Yeah, and also one of the last major Hollywood blockbusters to make large-scale use of miniature effects as opposed to CGI. I always prefer it. Sometimes it can look better. Yeah. Um, when C- Bad CGI is, you know, when it's bad, it's bad. It's bad, yeah. Yeah. It's not too bad now, it's pretty good, but back then it was shit. Yeah, I, I think some films it can ruin, even nowadays. Yeah. I really do. I mean, I, I, the example I always go to is Lord of the Rings Return of the King, right? Yeah. Just a brief tangent. That scene where that ghost army attacks. Yeah. Yeah, that looks terrible. Mm, not the best. And that was a big budget movie. They should have really done a better job with that. Yeah. But like Alien 3, for example, I mean, the CGI wasn't there. It wasn't good enough, but they CGI the alien, didn't it? It looks shit. Yeah. yeah. What year was that? 93, maybe? Yeah, something like that. Yeah, so I'm glad they went with the practical effects for this movie anyway. So yeah. anyway, uh, let's go on then. A Total Recall, sci-fi film about spies, true love and following one, dream, one man's dreams of nearly dying on a horrible, a horrible death on the barren surface of a godforsaken planet run by corporate bastards. <laughs> <laughs> Still better than the UK, though, I'd argue. <laughs> yeah. The movie begins with Douglas Quaid, a veritable everyman played by Arnold Schwarzenegger. Just a regular blue-collar guy married to Sharon Stone and made of about 300 pounds of perfectly sculpted muscle. Uh. <laughs> now, so, in the future, mankind has mastered space travel and colonised Mars. However, for some reason I noticed in the film that digital photography turns out to be a new fad. There's, Fuji film, there's a Fujifilm ad early on in the movie, so no one's come up with digital photography at this point. <laughs> yeah. And Quaid is obsessed by Mars. He's haunted by nightmares where he takes a mystery woman on a romantic hike of the red, sur- red planet's barren surface and then he falls down a cliff and, expl- and suffocates and explodes in the vacuum. I love um, that bit when the eyes po- like, start popping out. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. You can always actually... feel there's no air. You can always feel there's no air. <laughs> <laughs> I do love that effect, actually. Um, yeah, it's good, eye- isn't it? You see it a couple of times in the movie, and it's like, Ugh. one question I've got, you two are more sciencey than me. After your eyes are bulged out like that, yeah. right, would they go back with no damage? I doubt it. I no. No, <laughs> I don't think so. <laughs> would they? Woman they may take some time. They may take a lot of time. Eyes out. Because surely all your blood vessels in your eyes have burst. Probably. So I was, I was just curious. I, I mean, I should have mm. looked it up, but I thought I'd ask you to. No, there's no point asking us, is there? Well, certainly not me. <laughs> well, you're the science officer. Oh, you're the I know, yeah, but... <laughs> you freeze first. As the temperature's on Mars as well, wouldn't you freeze first? Halfway down that hill, you'd be dead, wouldn't you? In, no, you know, I don't think it's that like cold, actually, is it? Well, at the start of the movie, they're in spacesuits, and he falls down the thing, yeah. and he smashes his visor, and that's when his eyes start bulging. But yeah, if it's spacesuits, Claire, that'll be fine anyway. But as long as it's not too cold. But I, don't, I think it's you know like minus twenty or something. I don't think it's that bad. It's the I pressure. Don't know, I reckon it's colder than minus twenty. It's the pressure that does it. Yeah. And obviously, yeah. you're going to suffocate because there's no oxygen. Yeah. And the pressure's different. There's no atmosphere, is there? There's virtually, there's virtually no atmosphere. It's very thin. Yeah. I think you'd be... Okay, well, I was just... said pretty soon, to be fair, Ben, to, you know... What's, what's sorry, Claire? I, I think you'd be dead sooner than what it depicts in the film, let's put it in that way. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'd probably go with that. You know, our artistic rights here, yeah. you know. Yeah, well, that's fine. I used to. I was like, "Wow, like Arnie's eyes are really bulging out there." I wonder mm. if they go back in. And the tongue. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, the tongue. Yeah, he's a very, he's a man of some real facial expressions in this movie. Yeah. Fair. He's acting. I actually, I'm, I'm going to go on record and say I think this is one of Arnie's best. It's up there, isn't it? Yeah. It is. And it's one of the movies that sort of made him. It was such a big hit. 
Yeah, well, it was six, you know, most expensive one made to date. Yeah, and it was a big hit at the time. Yeah, absolutely. And it really sort of it, it sort of propelled him into the stratosphere because before it was like it was Terminator, Predator, you know, and then this came along and it, it sort of sent him into the elite, didn't it? Don't forget Commando, Mike, where Arnie <laughs> fights, a vil- fights a villain in a string vest. Oh, God, that villain's so shit. <laughs> he is. <laughs> he throws a tube at him and the oh, yeah. oh cool off or something like that. Yeah. Let off some steam. <laughs> Let off some steam. Let off some steam. Let yeah. off some steam. <laughs> mm-hmm. So Arnie is is literally a construction worker and he's obsessed with Mars and he says to Sharon Stone that it was to be fair to her in fantastic shape for this movie. She's shit acting though isn't she she's really terrible yeah but she's only there because she looks hot yeah <laughs> you know it's every construction worker is married to sharon stone <laughs> so he, he wants to go to mars on he wants to go to mars on holiday or and even though there's um, a separatist group of mutants waging open war on the corrupt martian government he decides he wants to go to mars and sharon stone uh, laurie is not so keen on that idea Definitely not. Once you get there and see it, what the fuck would you want to go? <laughs> a bit bad, well, isn't it? I'll give well, you a reason, but it's well, I know the, the reason why you'd want to go. <laughs> He'd be straight to the last resort. Oh, how did you guess? <laughs> <laughs> how did you guess? <laughs> <laughs> All right, so he comes up with a solution, and that's going to visit Recall, which is the company that takes your money in exchange for planting. Memories of great times in your head. Makes sense. Don't go, you know, have a holiday, but don't leave home. Yeah, why not? You know, that'll be your perception of reality. You would have gone, you would have done this. As far as you know, it, it was real, man. You know what I mean? Yeah, but should you mess around with your head like that? Well, well, of course not, probably. But, I mean, if it was safe, then, yeah, pretty awesome. Mm, I don't know. So obviously you can you can put it, it was seven hundred and ninety nine credits for a two week holiday on Mars for them to put this image these memories in your head, but then for an extra few hundred credits you can have a choice of Playboy, sports star, secret agent, or industrial tycoon, which is called the Ego Trip package. Which one do you want to go for, guys? What was the options again? I forgot. Playboy. Sports star, secret agent, or industrial tycoon? I'd probably go secret agent. I think I'd do the same. I'd probably go Playboy. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, but Mike, you couldn't afford the full package. They just stick you in the last resort. Oh, fuck that. (laughs) You can bang the midget. Uh. (laughs) 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 We've got a mate called Dave that would love that. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, so, <laughs> their attempt to implant the memories leads to disaster as, uh, as Quaid Arnie flips out and basically has a schizoid ambulism. Um, this uh, displeases both Quaid and Reek, and uh, Reek will do the right thing, so they sedate him, throw him in the erase his memory, and dump him in the back of a Johnny cab. <laughs> <laughs> which is <laughs> pretty much... <laughs> Don't you think That's the a... Johnny Cab guy looks like he's got a skin condition? He's ever so red and so sort of blocky. <laughs> yes. <laughs> As they freak me the fuck out, especially the way his head spins round. Yeah. You know, imagine you just come to, you've got no memory of how you ended up in this cab, and that thing's head just spins round. Goes, oh, <laughs> I'm Johnny. Oh, fucking hell. <laughs> yeah. I mean, if you think about it, you know, we give corporations unlimited data and that, you know, and that's fucking, look how that's going. You know, if we let them fucking just sort of invade our brains and start messing around in that, fuck knows what they got up to. Well, you're going to end up <laughs> unconscious in the back of a CD. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> Possibly being molested by the Johnny driver. Yeah. I don't know how much AI these things have got. I think all the cars look quite Delore, like almost sculpted on a like a squished up DeLorean. 
thing. Yeah. Apparently, all the cars in this were for Mexican public transport and just spray painted silver and made and sort of um, streamlined a little bit more. Uh, yeah. Mexican public transport must be really futuristic, or it certainly was in 1990. <laughs> yeah, they had to spray paint the whole underground again, didn't they? Yeah. Because they filmed there, but they wanted it a certain colour, grey, I think, so they just sort of spray painted it. It's nice to see that even in 2084, Battleship Grey hasn't gone out of use. <laughs> so basically, when Arnie does get back to his house, all hell breaks loose. We find out at this point that Laurie is... Um, it's actually this is this isn't real. This is this is mad. It's she tries to shoot Arnie, he restrains her, um, and she eventually tells her boss that Arnie has gone rogue. Now Richter, who is played by um Michael Ironside, who I think's great in this movie as well. Actually a very underrated actor, Ironside. Yeah, he's a good actor, isn't he? Obviously, he was in Starship Troopers as well, where he played the psychotic murdering Lieutenant Bazchek, and there's a psychotic murderer in this film. I feel like a typecast. <laughs> yeah. What, why would you agree for your missus to take this role when they, they could just have got any old, you know, person to do it? That's what I've always questioned. Yeah, that's true, because obviously it's implied that, that um, Richter is, is obviously knocking off Sharon Stone's character, Laurie. Yeah. Before she's been made to um, have this fake relationship with Arnie. So you're like, well, why would you agree to that? Because he's clearly not happy about it. No. It's all a bit odd, isn't it? Yeah, it is. And so Arnie manages to escape, and with a little help from himself from the past, i.e., a briefcase and a video screen inside. Um, <laughs> yeah. Is uh, that um, removing the tracking device from his nose did not look pleasant. I <laughs> know. I think it's one of the best scenes. That is good. Yeah. He's sat there with a towel on his head and, he, and he's like, I love that bit. Yeah. <laughs> it would have been better if it was tinfoil. Ah, oh, yeah. <laughs> and that's where we get the line, um, get to Mars. Get your ass to Mars. So that's basically what he does. It's quite, he's on the run and they, he puts the, the tracking device in the in the chocolate bar and lets the rats have it. Yeah. And the guy, the guy the sort of Richter's sort of assistant's just like, over there! And then he's all starts shooting, no, no, over there! And he's like, oh, God, dude, really? You can't miss Arnie. He's six foot five, he's 300 pounds. Uh, you know, so, he's uh, a bit well, funky, isn't he? <laughs> exactly. You, start, you can't exactly lose him down the back of the sofa. You know? <laughs> so... I, I do love the bit when he does get to Mars and he's dressed as the woman. Oh, yeah. yeah. And she's just like, it's, the stoop must have like so many programmed phrases and he's just like, how long are you here for? Two weeks. Do you have any fruit or vegetables? Two weeks. <laughs> <laughs> Two weeks! <laughs> and I, I don't know who played that woman, but I thought she was great for that 30, you know, sort of couple of minutes she was on screen. Yeah. I think I've seen her in stuff in the 80s, maybe. So um, he, he then, like, sort of takes the head off. He sort of comes off. He takes those up above him, and then he's like, throws it at the guards who all come running in, wielding assault rifles to try and arrest him, along with Richter, who's there. And he's like, hey, catch. Throws the head at him, and then it explodes, which is pretty cool. Yeah. All those soldiers you see in that, they're all U.S. Marines. They just borrowed for the movie. All right. Yeah, yeah they're not... They're not actors. They just got basically rented a load of U.S. Marines. Which cool. I thought was pretty fun. Mm. Uh, you know, when the blast door closes, the one that he goes through just happens to have a ten-second delay. Yes. Just for Arnie. <laughs> <laughs> it is weird. There's like, you know, Richter's there. And they're shooting at him, and you're like, you're in a glass dome on Mars. This glass huh. isn't bulletproof for some reason. Yeah. Why would you have that system in place? Why is anyone allowed in there with a firearm? Well, it's all about greedy corporations, isn't it? Trying to skimp on the money. Yeah. Probably cost too much to make everything bulletproof, so... It's only the workers, isn't it? You can get some more. Well, I guess so, but I wouldn't be too chuffed, because, I mean, a couple of guys go flying out the window. Yeah. Those deaths are on Michael Ironside's hands, man. Hmm. So... Arnie does escape, 
and he gets in a cab driven by Benny and they go to the last resort, which is the poorest part of town. And he wants to find a two boob hooker named Melina. Hmm. Freak. <laughs> and some of the some of the makeup in this is actually really good, actually. I quite enjoyed watching this bit again. Yeah, you enjoyed watching a certain bit over and over again, didn't you? Quick it did variety. take a while to get through this scene. <laughs> <laughs> Repeatedly. <laughs> Look, there's a woman with three tits. <laughs> <laughs> if you haven't seen the movie, there's a woman with three tits. It's fucking awesome. <laughs> you know, sorry. Can't tell me you didn't look at it, Mike. Huh. That's part of the film, isn't it? It's like huge. <laughs> <laughs> and they're quite good as well, to be fair. For a mutant, they're a cracking set of boobs. So Melina tells Quaid that he was part of the resistance and that she doesn't want to do, have anything to do with him anymore because she's figured out that he's a guy called Hauser, who's... Cohegan, who is Cohegan, he runs the place. He's the awful, evil corporate bastard dictator. He's mates, best mates with him, and he was undercover. Now, so he, Quaid ends up back at this hotel room, and he's confronted by the doctor from the recall lab. I love this bit. He offers, he's like, look, you are having a massive psychotic episode. This isn't real. You need to take this red pill. Clues where the Matrix got that a bit from. Mm. Mm-hmm. And you'll go back to sleep and you'll wake up and you'll be you again. There's quite a few similarities between this and The Matrix, actually, when you mention it. Yes, there is. There was The whole perception um, of reality. What is reality? And, you know. Yeah. You know, this is a bad dream and he needs to be guided out of it. The red pill symbolises the, the exit he's got to take from his own brain. But Arnie notices a bead of sweat running down the doctor's head. Yeah. And he's like, well, hang on. If this was my dream, you wouldn't be sweating, would you? Well, it depends, actually. It depends how lifelike. Oh, yeah. It's, it's a difficult, difficult one, isn't it? Yeah. Could still be. He could have dreamt of sweat, couldn't he? Well, he could have. But the guy who's only sweating because someone's got a gun in his hand and he's, you know, True. on the edge. As yeah, well. therefore, in his dreams, he would, he, you know, his brain would link that, holding a gun to someone's head. They may sweat. You may have seen it on someone else before, and therefore the brains put it in to make it realistic. I don't know. It isn't conclusive evidence, is it? It's good. Good enough, I suppose, but is it conclusive evidence? I don't know. Well, in all fairness, the body count in this movie is tremendously high. <laughs> yeah. right? I think, you know, Arnie's seen sort of secret agent persona in this just seems to link escaping from a situation with killing everybody in the room. <laughs> Because as you know, they leave the hotel room and they're taking him down the corridor and he's he's been knocked out. And you know, then Melina turns up with a with a fully automatic weapon and starts shooting everybody and then has a massive fight with Sharon Stone. And Arnie shoots his ex his head his wife in the head with the classic line, consider a divorce. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Yeah, it's very violent, isn't it? Actually, I, I'm going to find an article. See if, see if I have a quick look and see what the body count is in this movie. Mm. <laughs> I really should have had a look. So with the help of Melina and shooting every last person in his path, he heads back to the um, the best little hall house on Mars, a last resort, where the mysterious leader of the rebel group, Quarto, awaits him. Quarto is like a beer belly mutant. Mm. Along with Benny, the driver. As well, he's there too. He's basically a talking, psychic beer gut. Yeah. He's got, like, four fingers, them little beady eyes, hasn't he? Yeah. He's got them little teeth, and he's all sort of... He look, looks like someone's painted him with a bit of oil or oiled him up or something. <laughs> <laughs> Even mutants have got to moisturise, Claire. <laughs> yeah. Oh, it looks greasy, nasty. <laughs> maybe, it's, maybe it just secretes mucus or something. Who knows? Yeah, maybe he's got. It's, he's definitely a bit of a conjoined mucusy twin thing going on, hasn't he? It is yeah. grim, isn't it? Yeah, I, I remember watching it for the first time actually, and being like, "Oh, that's fucking weird." <laughs> but yeah, because Quarto is like the guy that's like got Quarto stuck on him. He's like kind of surplus to requirements, really, isn't he? Yeah. 
<laughs> you think it was like a club that got in a hand? It's like Quarto was like, oh, I'm going to go and see this club. And, you know, the political organisation drags his blo- this bloke along with him. And this guy's just an innocent. He's just sat there like, I don't want to get involved in all of this. I just want to live a quiet life. <laughs> yeah. It's like that real, this real Siamese twins in real life, wasn't it? They didn't get on, did they? That's right. Uh, I, th- I think they like stopped talking to each other and stuff. <laughs> <laughs> didn't wasn't there a Siamese twin thing recently where one of them wanted to go into porn and the other didn't? I didn't know about that. Yeah, <laughs> That'd be awkward, though. wouldn't it? Maybe I maybe I dreamt it. I don't know. Probably. What fucking dreams <laughs> are you having? <laughs> it's been a lonely lockdown. Fucking has, hasn't it? <laughs> Siamese porn. <laughs> <laughs> Nothing wrong with twins, Mike. <laughs> yeah, not when they're fucking joined at the hip, literally. <laughs> or at the head. Yeah. <laughs> Two heads are better than one. <laughs> uh... <laughs> yeah, what if the other one's a right bitch and she's just putting you off the whole time? Wow. Pulling faces at you. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and criticising your technique. <laughs> That's why there's a bag. <laughs> Stick a bag on her head. <sighs> well, I'm just you know, throwing it out there. Right. Anyway, well, um, put it out there that you want some Siamese twin love. Well, no, well, not not necessarily. Just to, just <laughs> I'm sure that I heard somewhere that there was going to be. Siamese twin porn with these these girls. Oh, it's got to be out there, surely. Yeah, I'd imagine so. I mean, I don't know how common Siamese twins are. Anyway, <laughs> <laughs> Benny the cabby turns out he's a bit of a, sl- a shit bag, isn't he? Even though yeah. he's, a mutant, he's against That's his it. fellow mutants and kills Quarto. Yeah. Not before touching Arnold Schwarzenegger and doing the whole. whole... Open your mind. Uh, yeah. <laughs> That's when we find out there's actually uh, an al- some alien tech. Mm. I should point out the reason that these guys are mutated and nasty is that because they're the poorest of the poor, they get the shittest quality air. Yeah. Which over the generation has caused genetic mutations. Yeah, I think this been... that's why that this this alien mm. uh, this alien alien temple slash reactor, which can make a breathable atmosphere on Mars, is such is is pure. Well, it's, Cohagen doesn't want that to happen because he's selling people the air they're breathing. Of course, puts him out of business, doesn't it? That's it. But as um, Quarto is killed, that then sparks a massive riot in the in the shitty part of town. Leading uh, Carl Hagen to turn the air off, mm. which is a simple yet effective way of controlling the population. I thought, yeah, yeah, it's like the ultimate capitalist hell, isn't it? It's like they're actually selling your air now to breathe. It's like fuck me, yeah, fuck that. Yes. So in between bouts of gloating and evil mirth, Cohagen tells. Quaid, Arnie, about the truth about himself. It turns out Quaid was not being hunted for his knowledge of the alien air machine. He had his memory arrays in order to get close to the resistance and expose and kill Quarto. Mm-hmm. So they erased his memory, planted some stuff about an alien air machine in his brain and inserted him on Earth so Quaid, as Quaid so he could one day wake up, head off to Mars and pick up where he left off. Um, however, then... then Obviously claims that his alternate personality has taken over, he's gone insane, and they're going to reprogram him along with Melina to make her an, an, an obedient woman, as he says, as they should be. And I was like, whoa, you wouldn't get away with that nowadays. <laughs> so yes, Arnie escapes and in a matter of minutes kills about six or seven doctors. Yeah, the <laughs> killing spree goes on. He's a bit psychotic in his film. He's like, screw you. Yeah, he is. He's like... He's, He's not even shooting them in this scenario. He's stabbing them with metal pipes through the face. <laughs> and he's like, sleep at the party, Richter. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> oh, it's, it's just like... Oh, it's, yeah. I do I do like when Cohagen leaves. He's like, oh, yeah, you're inviting my party later. And then he says to the doctor, remind him. 
<laughs> Why does the baddie never stay to watch? Well, I, I assume they always think it's beneath them. They just let their henchmen do it, but you can't trust a henchman. No. You really can't trust a henchman. So they do actually go and fight the te- alien temple slash reactor is in Mount Olympus, Mount Olympus Mons. That's the biggest, yeah. I don't know yeah. if I can't remember now, but yeah, that's the biggest volcano on Mars, yeah. Yeah, I think it's actually the biggest in the solar system. Quite possibly, yeah. And after an enjoyable shootout involving holograms, this bit was quite fun, actually. Yeah. Because they just sort of, they got this holographic projector watch that they're just throwing between Arnie and, and Melina, throwing to each other, sort of projecting them. And then there's a great bit where Arnie goes, ha, ah, am I the real Quaid? Ha, 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 ha. Yes, I am. And the guns are all down. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Again, crap henchman. Yeah. Well, that's it. You can't get the staff. You really can't. You can't get the staff. No. I fully agree with you. And when you do, like Quaid, you know, he turns on you. That's it. You know, that's probably why I wanted to keep him alive on his side. Everyone else is shit. (laughs) (laughs) Yeah, the Martian. It's no wonder that these Martian police force is losing to a bunch of mutants. You know? Mm-hmm. Then again, the mutants have got powers, so maybe that's why. Maybe. Mm-hmm. Um, what I did find cool was the, 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 the on switch was like a reptilian hand. Like a four-fingered claw hand. Yeah. Yeah. I thought that was ace, so obviously there's reptilians on Mars. What I never understood is what happened to the aliens beforehand. Why didn't they just turn it on and save their civilization? Maybe they just buggered off. Yeah, I don't really get that bit, but never mind. I assume some other like alien race came to Mars, built it. I don't know why. I don't know. You know. <laughs> they <laughs> fucked up. It, in the mic. We're the... going to transform the atmosphere. Here. It's like we built effort, efforts in place. Ah, oh, you know, forget it. I'm, I'm bored now. Let's it. go. <laughs> <laughs> I don't I mean, know. But then they're, they're clearly not living there because the only infrastructure is the human infrastructure. So, you know. That's what I mean. They died out. Why did they die out? Because of the atmosphere. Well, they built a reactor but never used it. I, don't, I never got that bit. But... Well, maybe because they're a bit sort of reptilian looking, lizardy looking, judging by their hands, they fucked the surface of the planet up, went to Earth, became the dinosaurs. And the reactor just kind of turned off and the atmosphere went to shit again. What do you mean they became the dinosaurs? Well, well they, they were... just sort of devolved into dinosaurs and then got wiped out. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not the science guy. Oh, fuck me. No wonder. Do you that kind of theory. Jesus. Right, they're thinking, fuck me. So there's an asteroid coming. Anyone, anyone, any of those dinosaurs that had any sort of like thinking capacity left after they've devolved, must have thought, oh, fuck, man, why did we leave that planet? Why don't we just press it? Because they screwed the surface. Why don't we just push the button and the fucking <laughs> asteroid's coming? <laughs> <laughs> quick, quick, get to Mars. No, we don't know how to make fucking space shuttles anymore. We've regressed. <laughs> oh, fuck. It's just a theory. All right. Maybe, maybe that's maybe just that species is extinct. Well, good luck with that one. <laughs> you know, maybe the species is extinct now. Who knows? Yeah, because they didn't press the fucking button. <laughs> <laughs> that's my point. <laughs> oh. Maybe they foresaw Earth using all its natural sources and thought resources, and then we were gonna go to Mars anyway. What we'll, we'll be the bigger, we'll be you know, we could use this for ourselves, but in a few thousand years, they're going to destroy that planet, so we better leave it for the humans. Nah, <laughs> I ain't buying that. Oh, I'm a little bit surprised, it's you know. <laughs> <laughs> well, what's your theory then, fucking Mr. Clever Clugs? Well, that's what I mean, it doesn't make any sense. I think it's a bit of a plot hole. Oh man, I, that's I'm... what I'm putting out. Okay, like Prometheus, where did they come from? 
Well, that's true. Well, uh, yeah, well, that film is shite. <laughs> <laughs> but still, it's got a plot hole. Yeah. So the machine gets turned on. Quaid and Melina are sucked outside to choke. And this is where we get our second eye-bulging choking scene, which, you know, those eyes are really coming out. And But the air machine starts to work, and then, you know, you see the oxygen bursting through the sides of the mountain before eventually all through the top. Air, free air for everybody. Yay! <laughs> the resistance has won. Yep. With the air really come smashing through the glass? Oh, that's, yeah, because if it's going to come smashing through the glass, it's, well, number one, anyone by the glass is going to get shredded by flying glass. Yeah. Uh. If the pressure was enough, it would, yeah. Mm. But now we don't need a dome. It's okay. Yeah. Did anyone notice how the sky went blue as well? Yeah. Yeah. Well, that's bullshit. I call bullshit on that. Wow. Because the the sky is only blue because of the water on our surface of our planet. No, is it? Is it because of that? I thought I thought it was uh, it the gases. Go on. It's the gases in the atmosphere, isn't it? I think. I think it just reflects. Uh, it absorbs blue light or something. I guess. I, I don't really know. To be fair. I thought Maybe. it. The, the light from like outer space bounces onto our water, which sort of makes it. Cause our, our our water, when you look through it and you're underneath it, it looks bluish. But when you've got it in a cup, it's just clear, isn't it? So it makes it blue, and then because of the blue colour, off, off, and it bounces onto sort of the clouds in the atmosphere. Or, that's what I. Thought. I don't know about that. I think it's, I the, it's something to do with gases in the atmosphere. I think. Yeah. I have no idea. Yeah. So if if they are releasing the gas that is the same constitution as that on Earth, maybe it would turn the sky blue. Mm. I don't want to go on holiday there anymore, anyway. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so, yeah, and, and the film ends with, with Quaid and Melina ascending a hill to watch the blue sky emerge over Mars, though. Quaid is unsure. Was it all a dream implanted from recall? Will he really get to spend his days as a bouncer in a filthy mutant brothel as various factions fight to fill the power vacuum left by the death of Cohegan? Or will he be disappointed and wake up safe next to Sharon Stone, the woman he just fantasised about shooting? Well, that's it. He did buy the secret agent package, didn't he? That's it. So maybe it was all a dream. That's... It could be. Now, this is the big thing with the film, is the ending leaves it deliberately unclear. Yeah. Now, is it? Is it a dream? Is it the memory? Have we just watched this guy's violent power fantasy and three-titted woman fantasy? <laughs> or was it actually real and now Arnie and the Resistance have got to figure out how to make up the mess, figure out the mess that is Martian society? I'm hoping it's the mess. <laughs> yeah. mm. But I do think the last line's a bit lame. Kiss me quick before you wake up. I don't, I don't um, know. Maybe it's the uh, way she did it. Yeah, I'm thinking it's probably a dream, personally. There's some little things with the um, the music, like the same music in the recall lab plays several times during the film, and it's like the one of the times is when the doctor is with Arnie in the hotel room. Yeah. And the other time is towards the end of the movie. I think at the end of the movie. So it's like, well. Maybe, maybe it wasn't. I suppose your perception is reality, isn't it? Of course it is, yeah. If everything you can see, taste, feel, touch is, is real to you, then that's your reality. Mm. I like to think he saved the day. I'm an optimist. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the optimist. I'm a realist, so it's a dream. <laughs> I so in lock, lock and two, two smoking barrels, uh, Mike, does the do the guns go over the edge into the river? I can't remember, Claire. It's been that long since I've seen it. <laughs> uh, it oh, leaves it open, doesn't it? it? Yeah, yeah. He's hanging over the edge, isn't he? And the phone That's rings. It. 
and he he's about to tell him, don't don't get rid of the guns, they're worth like 250,000 quid or whatever each or something like that. And he's just about to knock it off into the river to, to get rid of them because they they made a crime with them, haven't they? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> I like Good to think movie, that though. phone, he answers <laughs> the phone and then, you know, picks the guns up and they live happily ever after. Oh, I did think so. Uh, in this one, maybe he does get the girl to mind for mm. basically. Um, I like to think that it, it was real and they, they had messed with his head, but then again, you know, if he's paying an extra 300 credits for this, my god, what a one hell of a memory! Yeah, and either way, to him, it's real, so to him, it doesn't matter if it, if it was a dream or reality, it happened to him, didn't it? Oh, well, yeah, yeah, I as guess, far as he's uh, concerned. I mean, he's a win-win for him. He can stay on Mars in Molina or he can wake up next to Sharon Stone again. <laughs> it's a win-win, isn't it? Yeah. A story to tell at the, at the local public house, won't it? Yeah. <laughs> See, this is the thing, right? So let's say that you have this, this put in your head, right? Yeah. yeah, and then you go for a job interview, like you got all these things on your CV. Oh, I helped a revolution uprising in Mars. I'm like... Hang on a minute. <laughs> <laughs> Are you speaking to your mate like, oh, you'll never guess what happened. Turns out I was a secret agent. I don't know, my mind wiped. I went to Mars and started the revolution. I'm like, no, you weren't. You were here yesterday. <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, there's, I think it could clearly see, I think this is a terrible idea and it'll screw your head up. Yeah, now you come to mention it, it, it ain't that good, is it? Because you've got to tell everybody you've had this done so no one blows the memory for you. Ah, but you, you, do you go to the lab for two weeks? No, I don't think so. I think they just do it there and then in the afternoon. You don't even get any days off work. The next day you're back at work and you just, you don't, you won't well, physically yeah. look like you've had a holiday, will you? No, but mentally you will, though. You'll be thinking, you'll be on a right high, won't you? You'll be like, fuck me, yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, but then you come back and oh, my God, I killed amazing. all those people. <laughs> yeah, and then you put the news on, it's like, oh, where's the revolution? <laughs> <laughs> Fake news. <laughs> it's true. Okay, <laughs> hang on, that Cohagen still in charge of Mars. Yeah. I'm pretty sure I threw him off a building. <laughs> yeah. And there's his number one, I'm sure I forgot to mention it, that I ripped his arms off as he as a fucking lift was coming down, and then I threw his arms back at him as he was falling to the ground. <laughs> <laughs> It's the best scene in the whole film. We forgot to mention it. What does he say? I can't remember what he says. What does he say? Oh, oh yeah, that's it. Uh, see you at the party, Richter. Took uh, <laughs> his uh, arm back at him. Well, as the arm, this man is falling to the ground. He sees another man who's just ripped his arms off, throw his arms back at him. <laughs> it's fantastic. What a badass. <laughs> well, he'd be a ace governor as well, isn't it? California. Right, I mean, he's a governor of California, isn't he? He was. He was. Two yeah, terms. He was. I bet that was ace. Bet you felt mm. safe there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Arnie is governor, the governator. I'd go for that. I like Arnie. I don't. I don't think he can really do much wrong in my eyes. Apart from the sexual harassment cases. But, you know, uh, Arnie the Octopus, they used to call him. <laughs> but he's Arnie. He's a, he's a pop culture icon. He is. Yeah, he's a legend, isn't he? Yeah. It'll be a sad day when he goes, just like Sean Connery, R.I.P.D., the best Bond. Yeah. Well, for me, it was Roger Moore, but... No one likes Roger Moore, Mike. He was too fat. <laughs> <laughs> I know, but it was my era. It's like I remember it when I was a kid. It was what I used to watch. Moonraker is my favourite Bond. So, Roger Moore. Oh, no. <laughs> no. Yeah, but, I mean, come on, he was blatantly wearing a fucking corset for half of them films. Yeah, but it was sort of he played it less serious, didn't he? It was um, I don't know. I've, I liked it anyway. I liked it. All right. Was so. he as well, wasn't he? Oh no, I think that was Connery. How was it? The pussy. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. You know, they call me Pussy Galore. I must be dreaming. Uh, <laughs> Never ask him to sit on your face. Uh, uh, so I think that's uh, 
wrapped up Total Recall. Let's end the show on some weird news then. I just want to say I really did enjoy watching Total Recall again. Yeah, yeah it's a good film. Classic. Yeah. Absolutely. Well worth it. I think more than so than a 7.5, but you know. Yeah, I'd probably go about as high as 8, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Okay, weird news. Let's get the boys' views on this week's weird news. Miley Cyrus reveals she's working on an album of Metallica covers and claims she's had a close encounter with aliens. Well, I'm not thrilled about the Metallica covers. <laughs> Neither am I. In not all fairness. It. But the alien thing, well, she says, and I'm quoting, I had an experience driving through San Bernardino with my friend and I got chased down by some sort of UFO. Probably the aliens are after for crimes against music. <laughs> she added, I'm pretty sure about what I saw, but I'd also bought weed wax on a guy in a van in front of a taco truck. <laughs> 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 so it could have been the weed wax. Yeah, I think it might have been. <laughs> the best way to describe it is a flying snow plow. Right? She went on, it had this big plow in front of it and it was glowing yellow. I did see it flying and my friend saw it too. There were a couple of other cars on the road and they also stopped to look. So I think what I saw was real. Okay, now there's other witnesses. Maybe it wasn't the weed wax. Maybe it was. Not for the people. Well, she's, yeah, but she thinks she's seeing something in the sky. Maybe she thinks she's seeing other people stopping and looking at her. Oh, well, maybe. That's true. Where's your around... testimony, you know? That's it. Yeah, there's plenty of times I've been absolutely stoned and seen things that weren't there, so I can really? believe that. Recently? No, not recently. <laughs> but, you know, once or twice. Walking home from the pub. <laughs> yeah. There's shadows in the trees. Uh. <laughs> They're coming to get us. It's the Dolly Baller. <laughs> oh, <man. laughs> there is a Dolly Baller. <laughs> I was only known as that once. Uh. <laughs> I once thought I saw a dead kid in a tree. Wow, your brain just went straight to dead kids, eh? No, because there was some flowers in a tree I noticed on the way to my mates. I cut through some woods and there was like flowers and stuff on a tree. I thought, what is all that about? And a picture of a boy. I thought, oh, well, he, he, he must have died. He must have found the tree or something. And coming back, I was absolutely bad. And I could have sworn I saw that kid sitting in the tree. Maybe you did. Freaked me out anyway. Did you run? Well, I quicken be fucking pace, let's put it that way. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man, the kids are like, where are you going? Come back, please talk to me. Uh, Am I, I can... dead? <laughs> yes, the fuck up. Leave me alone. <laughs> There's a little I bit more from... Smoking there, uh, Mike. <laughs> oh, yeah, I was smoking all day, like, and uh, I was a bit fucked. I see... I used to go to a friend's house and he lived on the edge of the churchyard, so I had a choice of walking around the perimeter or walking through it. I'll be bold. Well, I started off walking through it and then, you know, like, say, you know, you're quite high and sound travels more easily at night, so you start hearing things. I was like, you know what, I'm just going to start walking around the churchyard. Superstitious. Mm -hmm. Uh, but when I walk back from Mike's now, I go to the churchyard. I do cut through. Living dangerously. Yeah. <laughs> well, I think I'm more I'm more curious nowadays. I'm like, come on, you fuckers. <laughs> <laughs> Show me what you got. Just one little last bit for Miley. She says that the experience was so shocking, it left her unable to look at the sky for days because she feared the extraterrestrials might return. Well, if only and take her with her. <laughs> I could just imagine her flinching as birds were going over. <laughs> <laughs> well, so 
you know, apart from the bad news she's doing a Metallica covers album, she now believes in UFOs. That's something that we can get her on the show. Not after what you just said. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just saying, you know, maybe. I <laughs> think you may have burnt your bridges there. Oh, well. Probably wasn't going to happen anyway. No. <laughs> All right, then, next one. Okay, man left in stitches after finding X-rated business card under floorboards. A man working to restore an old house to its former glory couldn't help but chuckle after discovering what appears to be a rather old business card on the floorboards. Basically, it's for a male prostitute, I think. Yeah, a guy called Percy Longprong. Yeah, okay. expert, expert frigging, <laughs> plain and fancy. Ooh. Terms, cash before mounting. Another <laughs> 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 uh, card, it says, Maidens treated gently, spinsters delighted. Extra attention given to neglected married women. Reduced <laughs> terms to young parties. Satisfaction guaranteed. Widows a speciality. Please turn over for price list. <laughs> what is... That's superb. Okay, you want to hear what his price list was? Yes, by all yes. means. For a bubble shake, whatever that might be, I nine know. pence. Ooh. For saliva exchange, it's two shillings. That's a kiss. Yeah, must be. French tickler, that's also two shillings. What's a French tickler? <laughs> and f- but for a finger diddle, it'll be two shillings sixpence. Ooh. And if Vaseline's needed, extra five pence. <laughs> <laughs> and for fifteen shillings, you can get whips and scourges. Three strokes for fifteen shillings. Only three strokes. That's five shillings a stroke. <laughs> I know. Yeah. But Percy does give green shield stamps. You'll be pleased to know. What's a green shield stamp? <laughs> you might as well just rob something. You'd get more uh, lashings, wouldn't you? Yeah, that's it. <laughs> oh, I love the time rates. You see that? Where's that? Per hour, 10 shillings. All night, 50 shillings, and it will guarantee you two times. Oh. I can just about make the It says muff dive. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 15 shillings and sixpence. Oh, that's pricey. <laughs> I think one of them's a tongue bath. That's yeah. 12 shillings, sixpence. Something about different positions, six shillings, threepence. Oh, man, Percy Longprong, male prostitute. That's fantastic. <laughs> yeah. Is that a pork scuttle? <laughs> <laughs> Dick scuttle? I don't know. Six shillings, three pence. What's that? <laughs> Is that when you get to play with it, or Willie? I don't, I don't know. Because <laughs> it's, um... uh, it's not as much as muff diving, so I'm assuming that... It... You know, mm. he's pleasure over you getting pleasure because it seems to be. Oh, it, might, it might be a back scuttle. Oh, a back? Maybe he walks like a crab for six, <laughs> feet, six shillings. Three <laughs> I'm pretty sure it says womb stretch. <laughs> <laughs> Seven shillings and sixpence. You can have your womb stretched. <laughs> oh, dear. Well, he's uh, living up to his name. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I like it. I might become a male prostitute. Well, that's a piece of history, isn't it? Crikey, you know. Just, yeah, just bear, make sure you get the cash before mounting. Because <laughs> <laughs> they might not pay. Yeah. <laughs> well, so it is a womb stretch. It's a position, I think. I think those are positions... Oh, Vaseline hey. if needed. Well, I hope it doesn't come out. Back scuttle. <laughs> Get me in the mood. <laughs> He's walking along like a crab. <laughs> a sexy crab. 
<laughs> I've just got visions of teabagging someone doing a crab walk. <laughs> How did you know? <laughs> <laughs> the teabag crab walk. It's going to be my thing now. Right. I'm going to move on to the last piece of uh, weird probably, news. Probably for the best. <laughs> okay. Well, this this woman's getting something right and wrong at the same time, but a woman marries ten times but won't stop until she finds the one that can love me. Oh. <laughs> Surely she's just a... figured it out the first nine times. Mm. Well, she's There's a problem right there, isn't it? What, that she wants them to love... Well, it's all about me. <laughs> yeah, I have to find the one that loves me. Oh, so Cassie from the United States appeared to, on a chat show with Dr. Phil to ask advice on where she's going wrong in a relationship after admitting considering ending her marriage with her 10th husband. Oh. Yeah, her longest marriage has been eight years and her shortest has been six months. Hmm. Hell. Now she's on the verge of ending a relationship with her 10th husband. A 56 year old is a successful businesswoman and uh, appeared on this chat show. Dr. Phil was like, 10 times, really? <laughs> and uh, this, this case, he was like, well, yes. Yeah, try 10 me. times. You know what she needs? What does she need? Apart from a backwards crab tea bag. <laughs> <laughs> She needs a ghost lover. She, <laughs> she can have multiple ghost lovers. She hasn't got to marry him. Don't love her. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, she's going wrong somewhere. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'd say. I don't know, but she gets them to marry her, so she must give a hell of a blowy. Just uh, <laughs> by the size of a gob, yeah. Never mind. Number 11 might be the right one. <laughs> Eleven times the charm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh man, that's terrible though. That is awful. Ten times. Why bother putting yourself through it after the first couple? I don't know. All the money. Oh. I mean, it's not like she's getting married in white anymore, is it? Uh... <laughs> Definitely not. Do you think she got a card stamped and she's had the ten, and this is a free one? For number 11. Uh, yeah, yeah, the registry office. Every 11th wedding is free. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like McDonald's coffee. Yeah. Uh, Something like that. I'd go with that. I think she used to go and see Percy Longsprong or whatever his name was. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think she does actually. Shame he's probably dead or very, very old by now. <sighs> yeah, he's going to be dead. I don't think he's going to be managing that twice a night at his age if he's still alive. <laughs> <laughs> uh, uh, might have to revise his rates, but I bet he can give her a French tickler. There we go. <laughs> I'm going to Google French tickler later. I've got to figure out if I know what that is. Oh, yeah. Well, you know. Find out. <laughs> or the womb stretcher. I'm, I'm intrigued. That can't sound good. That doesn't sound healthy. Mm-mm. Yeah. All right. Shall we call that a weird news? It is. Yeah. yeah. And, a, and an episode, I think. And an episode. So thanks for listening. I've been Ben. Don't drink the flavor aid and don't join a cult. I've been Mike. Thanks for listening. Peace out. May the force be with you. And I've been Claire. Happy lockdown if you're in the UK again. And keep an open mind, but not so open that it dribbles out your ears. Hey. Good evening. Yeah. <laughs>